this is the time of year when we typically report on the cold and flu season and offer tips to try and help keep you healthy and to keep those runny noses and watery eyes at bay. Joining me uh, with some more insight and hopefully with some remedies are two doctors who deal with this stuff all the time and they are friends of the program. Dr. Jennifer Caudill is back with us, a board certified family medicine physician. She's currently an assistant professor in the Department of Family Medicine at the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey School of Osteopathic Medicine. Also here, back with us, Dr. Rob Danoff, an American Osteopathic Association board certified family physician, serves on the, as the program director of the Family Practice Residency Programs and the Combined Family Practice Emergency Medical uh, Residency Programs at ARIA Health System in Philadelphia. Thanks to both of you for, for coming in. Great to be here. Yeah, Let's just here. start. I want, to, I want to pick right up at sure. where we left off with this report. Uh, we typically report on the cold and flu season all the time, but this time things have turned, it appears to me, dramatically different. A health emergency. What goes into that? that, that be, it becomes a health emergency rather than caution. Well, basically what it does is it gets everybody in gear, with hospitals, offices, paramedics, schools, work, because the flu doesn't just affect patients, it affects doctors and nurses and emergency medical technicians, and also it alerts us to the status. For example, there's only a certain amount of hospital beds in an area, and it lets people know, like, we coordinate with each other. For example, if my hospital is full, we coordinate with the neighboring hospital and say, hey, how many beds do you have? So basically, it's an alert system that helps us all work together and monitor what's going Has on. Has it come to that, that hospital beds are, are, are at capacity already? Are you guys seeing that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in my office, I was seeing patients between Christmas and New Year's, and we ran out of our rapid flu test. We have a swab, a nasal swab that we mm. can do to tell in the office if the patient has influenza. We ran out of them, and we're waiting for them on order because that's how many people were showing up to our office. Um, and I'm sure it's very similar in the hospital that you're working at. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, typically. Uh, again, let's say that you have the flu. Okay, sure, you're on bed rest, but you're usually at home. Is it come to the point where they're having to go to the hospital to get care in the hospital for the flu? Well, everybody's different. You know, in this day and age, a lot of people maybe don't have access to primary care. They may not have insurance. Or they may just feel so sick that they say, you know what, the doctor might say, well, I want you to go to the emergency room to be evaluated. You know, there someone might come in and we can do these rapid tests. You know, we stick this swab in your nose to see, do you have influenza? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we send people home. Sometimes we give them medicine. Sometimes they need fluids. It really depends on the person. Art, right, you're a young, healthy guy. But say that you're a youngster, you know, you're less than two years of age, or you're an age-gifted person over 65, or you have other health conditions. That may complicate matters if you get the flu. Well, and, and, and Dr. Jen, uh, in the report, 18 children have died. So children right. are really susceptible. Well, and, and, and something I wanted to say about that too is because we think about this as influenza. Ah, it's just the flu. You just have the flu. Go home and rest. Mm -hmm. And you bring up a really good point, and you too, Dr. Danoff, that actually influenza really it can kill. We mm. know that approximately 200,000 people every year are hospitalized from the flu or flu-like complications. Wow. And thousands, tens of thousands actually die from influenza every year. Mm. So it's important to remember that, yes, this is a condition that sometimes we consider self-limiting, which means it can kind of help itself, but it does hurt a lot of people. But, but I mean, we live in a, a, a technological age here. Surely you would think that there are proper medications, like the flu shot, that can keep a person from dying from complications of the flu. Well, well it depends on a lot of things. Yeah. You know, it really does. And most people do fine. I mean, it's an illness. But what we want to get across is, not to take it lightly, if you can decrease your risk for getting sick or possibly very sick, wouldn't you want to do it? And that's the flu vaccine is not 100% effective. Sure. But if it can decrease your risk for getting it or decrease your risk for giving it to someone else, then it's worth it. Talk to me about these viral strains. I know they all have different names and they have these complicated code names. Like right now, it's what, the H3N2. Wow, we know nothing about what all of that means. We just know that it's bad. Uh, talk to me about viral strains. How complicated can they be? Well, it, first of all, it's important to know that the flu shot is a vaccine against the flu. And the government, the CDC, tries to figure out which three flu strains are going to be most likely to happen that year. 
Um, that's what actually makes it the flu shot. Well, running around are lots and lots of strains of the flu virus. There's not just one type. Mm. And one of the strains that we're noting this year, as you mentioned, is the H3N2 strain. Um, this strain in past years has typically conferred a, a more serious type of illness, mm. and that's what we're seeing. And, and that's actually one of the reasons why we think that we have this sort of public health emergency. In addition to the flu um, season starting earlier this year, usually it peaks around January, February, we're seeing lots of, of cases in December. In addition to that, we've got this H3N2, which yeah. in years past has been a little bit more serious. So they recycle themselves, in other words. They, they keep coming back. And they change. And, and they change, mm -hmm. you know, and, and typically it starts in the Far East and then it comes here. So we might have certain flu family this year and then they go away for a few years and then some other flu family comes in right. and that's why the immunization needs to be updated every year <clears throat> because there's different strains of the flu. You, you guys both know because obviously you're doctors and you deal with this there are people who won't get the flu shot <laughs> they say look I am not uh, subjecting myself to this because they give you the virus and I want you guys to debunk this and talk about this Would you because be one it of makes those you no I, no, I am <laughs> not. You haven't had your flu shot, flu shot, shot have you, you out there? See, see you this is the... what happens when you have <laughs> people on the program. We should have a flu if, shot. I wish we had it, some. It, as it turns out, I have not had a flu shot <laughs> Why this would that year. Be? At no particular reason. I, I'm not opposed to it and okay. typically do get them, but I'm being been bad so far. <laughs> we should have brought our flu shots, um, Rob. Well, I'd have to fix that. I'll, have to get a, I'll, 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 I'll get one. But a lot of people don't like them. They say that, you know, it doesn't really help and, you know, it takes a couple of weeks. Talk to me about the immunization, how it helps, what it does, and you know, this is basic stuff, but I think we need to cover it. Well, basically the flu shot, as, as Dr. Jen said, there's three different types in there. So it protects you against two types of these A strains of flu. Think of A as the more aggressive type of flu. And then there's a B strain, one B strain. And all these can cause illness, but the A's are known to be more aggressive, maybe cause more severe illness. So if there's a good match in the vaccine, which there is this year, is. of what type of flu families are circulating, you have some pretty good protection. But just like Dr. Jen said, there's other strains of flu. And in fact, this year, there's more strains of flu, especially another type B that's causing illness. So basically, the flu shot will decrease your risk for getting the flu, or if you get it, will decrease the severity of it in many cases. Does it make people sick? No. I'm so glad we're talking about this. Oh, this is one of my biggest so, sort of Talk to me. soapboxes. The biggest, one of the biggest myths, I think, in medicine is, does the flu shot cause the flu? And the answer is no, it does not. Because you're giving, you're injecting the strain, though, it's right? A, it's a it's lie. Dead. It's a it, killed it, virus. Yeah. It's a dead virus. It, it cannot confer illness. So it's what it's doing is it's helping your body be able to protect itself against the flu should it come exposed to the flu later mm. on, mm. but it cannot make you sick. Mm. So, and that's actually, you know, I, I ask pretty much every patient in the office. I saw two patients this morning before I came in to do the show, and I asked everyone, did you get your flu shot? And the most common reason I see for people not getting the shot is either they think it's going to get them sick, or they think it doesn't help, or they think they don't need it because, hey, I'm healthy, they say. Okay, I've already got the flu. And I now, can I get the flu shot? Is it too late for, is it too late for no. me now? No, because here's the thing, a lot of people say, Doc, I already had the flu, I'm fine. They say, well, there's the flu family. There's Arthur and there's Dr. Jen and there's everyone else. <laughs> there are different strains of the flu. So just because you had it once doesn't mean you can't get it again. Mm. Mm. That's another reason why to get the flu vaccine, to try to protect yourself against different strains that are coming It takes around. a while to get, I guess, mobilized into the system, right? Once yes. you get the shot. I mean, typically, takes, how long does it take to take hold? It takes about two weeks right. to really have maximum effectiveness. Now. A lot of times people say, Doc, I got the flu shot and then now I have the flu. What did you do? And I said, well, first of all, you know, you can be exposed to someone walking in the mall and it may take a couple days, two, three days for you to maybe start showing symptoms. And say you happen to get the flu shot, you'll think it's because of that. Or this is the time of year when there's other strains going around. There's also colds going around. So a lot of times people blame this vaccine when there's other reasons that could cause their that's, illness. That's another part I want to talk right. about here. Okay, I, I've got a cold, okay? Mm -hmm. So does that make me more susceptible because maybe my immune system is a bit compromised because I have a cold? 
then that's going to make me more likely to get the flu? Does it work like that? Well, remember how the flu virus is transmitted. So let's talk about that a little bit. I think it's very important. Um, we get the flu. The flu is a virus, and mm. it's usually found in respiratory droplets. So when you sneeze, you cough, and all of the, the, the droplets sort of go out into the air, mm -hmm. that's how we can get it. We can also get it directly from other people, um, other people's secretions, drinking after their glasses, things like that. But don't forget you can also get the flu virus from inanimate objects. You know, if a flu virus is on this cup and I touched it and then were to maybe rub my nose or my mouth, it could be very possible that I acquire the virus. And, and I've heard that. How yes. long can it linger on a cup, on a doorknob or, or something of that, a, a computer keyboard? Mm -hmm. How long can it linger there? 12 to 24 hours. On hard surfaces, the flu virus can last that long. On your hand, anywhere from five minutes, if it's really moist, to maybe 20 to 30 minutes. It really depends. So on a tissue, like say you have a, do you use handkerchiefs? Yes. Bad boy. So basically on that, it's basically like a breeding ground. So as soon as you blow your nose in it, you put it in your pocket, it's going to stay there all day. You've got a friend. So basically you want mm. tissues. Get the tissues, throw them out. Good point. But a lot of people don't do that. And, you know, you share your keyboard so you can, like, talk on there. And then you touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth. And that allows extra entry of the virus mm. right into your system. So we want to try to avoid touching those areas. Which, Rob, you know, brings up a great point. I'm glad that you talked about this. That's why um, hand washing is so important, because that's how we're transmitting these things. We're touching doorknobs, we're touching people, mm -hmm. um, and we're getting the virus. You know, because if, if you uh, have a runny nose, if you're sneezing or coughing, you want to contain the flow, the spray, as you say, because that's obviously deadly. But then you can toss the tissue rather than hanging on to a handkerchief. Yeah, and then you may want to use a hand sanitizer afterwards. You know, it's interesting. A lot of people wash their hands quickly. They just go, that's it. But you got to get in between the fingers, you know, the top of your hands. And when you're washing, you sing a happy birthday song to yourself, and that's about the length. But a lot of people don't wash their hands properly. But other things, you know, this is a respiratory virus. So when you're around someone coughing or sneezing, this can, if you're within six feet of them, you're in that contact area. So What if they're just talking, though? Let's say that they're sick. Uh -huh. But they're just talking to you. They're not coughing or sneezing. Mm -hmm. But they're talking to you. You still don't want to be too close to them, do you? You're absolutely right. You really want to be cautious. If you have the flu, you want to be careful about going back to work too soon, um, being around people who might be able to get the illness from you, which really is anyone and everyone. So yes, um, even though six feet is sort of our range, um, even close-up contact, the, the possibility does exist. Um, you mentioned the antibacterial uh, uh, washes that everybody's got them everywhere. How effective are those? The hand sanitizers with 62% or greater than 60% ethyl alcohol work very well against influenza. So basically, if you don't have soap and water, and we don't need antibacterial soap, this is a virus. It's just the action of doing this kills it. But the hand sanitizers do work well. And the whole idea is they kill or inactivate the virus. And that's what are some what other want. common things that we shouldn't be doing if we're trying to stay safe from the flu? Um, well, this I think, is all common sense stuff, but we should talk actually, about you know, it. One thing that I really like to talk to people about is um, how to properly sneeze or cough. Hmm. A lot of people will cough or sneeze into their hands, and then they'll go reach for that doorknob, and that's maybe not what we want to do. Yeah. So I always recommend, and many places will recommend, coughing or sneezing into the elbow, into the sleeve, okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that you um, decrease the amount of spray of respiratory droplets mm -hmm. and that you don't transmit it to your hands, which then goes on to other people very that's easily. That's a very good point. Very yeah. good point. And other things, be aware, like, you know, you don't want to get, say you go to a food bar or your the vegetables or, you know, you pick up a tomato, you put it back, you don't want that one. You know, we're transmitting virus. So it basically, if, it, if you're sick, if at all possible, try to stay home Absolutely. because you're protecting other people. And a lot of times people say, oh, doc, someone in the household is sick. Well, you try to make a sick room. So if you have a house, make one room the sick room. So they're not the person. So Art, you're not going into all the other rooms. You go to the bathroom and the sick room, that's it. You're not going to the kitchen. You're not going to the den. Yeah. And then you try to designate one person as the caretaker. Wow, now that's that smart. One person. Now, let's talk about the caretaker. You're both the caretakers. Takers. Okay, there's a mother who has a sick child. Um, you know, you name it, okay? How do they protect themselves? How do you guys protect yourselves from getting sick? Do you know how many times I wash my hands a day? How many times do you wash your hands a day? My hands are cracked. My hands They're are cracked, so too. <laughs> yeah. We both have cracked hands because I literally wash my hands before and after every patient. 
I wash my hands almost before I do anything where my hands will come, come in contact with my mouth. So one of the best things we can do, because we have to take care of our loved ones, our friends, our family. As doctors, we take care of sick patients every single day. Yeah. Hand washing is one of the most important things. What about what about the uh, the mask? The mask. I okay. am a believer in it. I really you do. You see that a lot in Asia, by the way. People typically just walk down the street it's wearing smart. masks. It's smart because they filter out instead of breathing it in. Now, one of the first things if someone comes into the hospital or the office, I'll put a mask on them. You know, we make sure we do that. But if you're walking around the mall, people are like, oh, what, you know, why are they doing that? That's silly. But no, I think we can protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's a respiratory virus, right. you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another line of protection. Some people say it's going far, but I think whatever we can do to help, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, and actually the, the first and foremost thing, which I think we both agree on, is actually get vaccinated. Yeah, the so shot. the first thing that people need to go out and do, honestly, is talk to your doctor about getting a flu shot. Okay, today. that's what i got to do right away. Yes. So I, I, know, I, I, know I, I keep saying it. I wish we that. brought some with and, us and, today. And you know why? Yeah. Just one last thing. Say we don't have a flu shot for a young kid six months of age and younger. And some people can't get the flu shot. Maybe they have an allergy, whatever. So we can protect other people. The more of us who get the flu shot, the less chance other people have of getting it. Well, we, we have to keep talking about the, the young, the kids, uh, the, the, the children out there. And it's, maybe this is part of the myth conversation, maybe not. Um, kids like to go outside. They like to play. They like to linger out there. It's cold. It's winter. They're not properly wrapped up, uh, not wearing a hat. Uh, not wearing gloves, all of these things. Can the elements lead to the flu? They're outside and it's cold and they're playing, and workers, any, anybody. Can the elements help lead to the flu? I mean, the flu is caused by a virus. So I know Dr. Mom said, if you go outside and your hair is wet, you're going to get the flu, you're going to get a cold. No, but... You still we, shouldn't do it. But. No, but what we need to do is our immune system. So we need to eat healthier, nutritious food instead of all this high sugar stuff. Get adequate rest because we need to keep our immune system strong. That's really important. You know, activity, be active. So the better we can protect our bodies, the stronger it will be against that. Uh, um, the, the flu is caused by virus. Okay, medications. Mm -hmm. Okay, you mm -hmm. feel something coming on. Sure. Um, maybe it doesn't have you yet, but uh, I'm feeling a little funny. Something could be coming on. What should we be doing? Well, I think one of the first things patients should do is to um, really know their bodies, first of all. And I say this because there are patients who have different levels of risk, meaning getting sick for a patient who's got lung problems, heart problems, uh, maybe is immunocompromised, could be very, very different and much more severe than, say, a young, healthy person that has no medical conditions at all. So the first thing is if you know that either you're prone to illness or you have underlying medical conditions that make you a higher risk patient, infants, for example, elderly people, People, people with weakened immune systems, maybe even pregnant women, um, I do suggest run it by your doctor if you're not sure, okay? Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that we want to prevent, obviously, is the flu, but also the flu turning into something worse like pneumonia sure. or bronchitis. But, but Dr. Jen, and I, and I think that's very, very sound uh, information and advice, but you have to admit, most people, if they just start to feel like they're coming down with a little cold or something, they're not going to call the doctor for that. Mm -hmm. they, maybe they should, but the reality is they probably won't. Mm -hmm. and they, but, they, but they will look and see what's in their medicine cabinet, or they're going to run out to the, to the local uh, pharmacy or drugstore. Mm -hmm. So if someone is going to a local pharmacy or drugstore and not their doctor, are there certain types of medicines they should be looking to? Because it all just says cold and flu remedies on the counter. I always will check with the pharmacy. I'll tell you why. Or the pharmacy pharmacist because there's medicines you when you get a flu often it starts off fairly quickly you're, you're fine now and a half hour later it's like oh my god so you might get these shaking chills and fever so say you have a headache you'll take acetaminophen Tylenol but then you say well I got a sore throat you'll take something for a sore throat and cold well that might have acetaminophen or Tylenol so some people are taking multiple medications and you can get an overdose mm. of such acetaminophen. So I say if you're taking more than one medicine, check with a pharmacist to make sure. But the typical symptoms, we try to provide symptom relief. Sore throat, you know, headache, muscle aches, you know, joint ache, and fever. So typically people take those type of medicines initially. So yeah. one of the general rules is if you're feeling really ill, certainly within 24 hours you want to call the doc because we do have some antiviral medications by prescription we want to try to give people within 48 hours. That's the good stuff, like the, the z pack, isn't that? No, that's an antibiotic. That's so an antibiotic. You bring up a really good point, and this is something for everyone to know. When we talk about the flu, we're actually talking about a virus. Mm -hmm. Antibiotics do not work against not viruses. Help. No. Um, so you mentioned z pack, for example. That's an antibiotic. That's an so antibiotic. that's really important to know because I will get calls from patients saying, 
doc, I'm sick. I need an antibiotic. Uh, and if they tested positive for the flu, we know that antibiotics will not, not work against you. that. You know, Chris Rock, the comedian, I think, had a funny thing about, uh, hey, if you get sick, take some Rubitussin. <laughs> you know, Rubitussin cures everything. You know, <laughs> So anyway, that was kind of funny. Um, we're almost out of time here. But, uh, again, it's still early. Um, and the bottom line to all of this is what? Protect yourself as best you can and, and, and do what? What's your last words you want to say here? I would say get vaccinated. Uh, it's not too late. The flu season goes from October to May. It is not too late. And actually, January and February, again, are typically our, our highest months for seeing the flu. We know that 41 states um, have seen widespread cases of the flu. This is running rampant. Um, protect yourself by talking to your doctor about the flu shot and protect other people by getting the flu shot, too. Yeah, Doc. And if you have other health conditions, such as asthma or respiratory conditions or cardiac diabetes, make sure those are controlled. Because if you can be as healthy as you can, you're better able to tolerate influenza if you get it. Okay. Um, thank you both. Thank you. Uh, for those of you at home, you heard it from the doctors. Okay? So uh, we are out of excuses now if we haven't taken care of ourselves. Let's be careful out there. Good luck. I'm Art Fennell. See you again next time on The Report.